Hi, I'm Dr. Celine LaTulip, and this is part of the NSERC Create User Centered Design Module. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about rapid prototyping methods. So, rapid prototyping is something that you do to think through and refine an idea that you have for something that you want to design, typically software or some kind of system or device or hardware. And the reason to do rapid prototyping, which involves making lots of different prototypes, is that the first idea you have isn't usually the best idea. And so by prototyping many different ideas at a sort of very low fidelity with not very much detail, just the high level concepts, early on, you can figure out which ideas work best. And then you can discard some that maybe aren't so good and take the other ones and proceed with them and add more detail, refine them. And then again, you can discard ones that aren't working and slowly you narrow down to prototypes that are actually working really well and have more detail. So by prototyping, you avoid the time that it takes to code or fully implement some kind of system that isn't really the right thing. And with prototypes, you can get feedback from participants and users that are your target audience. And early prototypes are really good for getting feedback because they don't look like finished products. And if you show somebody a very polished finished product and ask them what's wrong with it, they're going to be hesitant to tell you anything bad about it because it looks like you've sunk tons of time and effort into it. But if you show somebody an early prototype that's not very refined, that's not very detailed, that looks rough around the edges, they're much more likely to be honest about what is good about it and what isn't good about it. So we're going to talk a little bit about a, a tool that we use when thinking through how to do prototyping, and that's the content fidelity matrix. So there are four different types of content that you can think about. One is information design, and this is thinking about all of the stuff that you need to have in your tool or system or device. How are you going to organize it? What goes on which screen? And, and this is in some sense, it's what we might call information architecture. So figuring out how things group together and what should be together in a menu, that type of thing. Then there's interaction design. And this is specifies how users navigate between different pages or different screens or different functionality on some kind of device. If they hover over something, do they get some feed forward that tells them what will happen if they click? When they do click, what kind of feedback do they get? Do they have to wait a while before anything happens? Or do they get a little uh, time dial that shows them something's happening? Or is it very immediate what happens and very obvious? So thinking through that interaction design and what the user's experience is going to be is part of what you can do when you are prototyping. Then there's branding and visual design. And this is, as you might imagine, things like your fonts and color schemes, what icon set you're going to use, what is your logo, and what other graphic elements are, are going to be in this product or system or interface. And finally, editorial content is the actual content. So this is the text that might be presented, photos, any videos that might be used, the user data, if it's a, an e-service type system, or the tools and functions that users can use and perform on their data. So that's all the actual editorial content. That's sort of the meat of whatever you're designing, but it actually is probably the thing that gets added last. All right, so with those four types of content that we have, we then have what we call the content fidelity matrix. And so this allows us to think about what level of fidelity or detail are we going to represent each of those different four types of content as we go through our prototyping process. And so we are going to, for a prototype that we design, we're going to put a check mark for each row somewhere here. So maybe we want to really focus on interaction design. And so the information design is going to be represented at very low fidelity. Our interaction design is going to be more high, maybe at, maybe at medium fidelity. And visual design and branding, we're not going to pay any attention to. So we'll put a checkbox here. And editorial content, we're not paying attention to. We'll put a check mark here. And so in a prototype like that, with a check mark over here, we're going to be focused on the interaction design. And different prototyping tools are good for that versus other types of content. So there's a number of methods of prototyping. And in this video, we're going to focus on the first three, storyboarding, blank model prototyping, and wireframing. So storyboarding is, you can think of being like a comic strip. 
So it's a narrative sequential prototype. It shows how a product or system or device might be used in real life. Um, and it's demonstrating sort of a, a typical customer or user's at, um, attributes. So we're, we're showing what they're like. Um, and then we're using a scenario to describe what happens. And you might make multiple storyboards for different types of users or to illustrate different aspects of what the system or device can do. And this is used very early in the ideation phase of a product or a system or development. So this is usually very visual like a comic strip and it's got cartoon-like features. So you may think, well, I can't do that because I'm not an artist, but you really don't need to be an artist. You can do something simple like star people, which is what I will demonstrate. Um, so you don't have to have drawing skills. You want to make sure that your storyboard illustrates sort of the context and the people, some kind of issue, like what's the problem you're trying to solve? And you want to show how the users are satisfied by the design that you have in mind. So storyboards don't typically show details of an interface. They're not screenshots or, or layouts of what, the, what a system looks like. They're for illustrating the high level concept or experience. All right. So let's give a demo. I'm going to switch over to a different application, the visualizer. Okay. And so now I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to draw a storyboard. So I'm going to draw a storyboard about um, an older gentleman who lives in a nursing home and I'm going to use star people. So star people means that I'm drawing something that looks like a star, but I don't draw that last part. I draw a circle. So here's my gentleman and I'm going to give him glasses and I'm going to give him a bow tie and a cane. Okay. So again, I am no artist, but that's my older gentleman and um, he's going to be in, this is my frame and he's going to be in a nursing home. That's like a hallway with lots of doors um, like that. Right. And it's kind of boring and he's going to be saying, and I'm going to give him a little speech bubble here that says, man, I'm so bored in my retirement home. Okay. So that's the first frame of my storyboard. And in the next frame, I'm going to have draw him again and he's still bored. He's got his little bow tie. Um, and he's got his cane, but then I'm going to draw another star person. And this is going to be um, Gladys and Gladys is going to come up and Gladys has big curly hair and she's a big smiley face person. And she's got her pearls around her necklace and she's got her little skirt on and she is they're still in the nursing home and she is going to say something to him and she's going to say, let's see here. Hey, Joe, don't be bored. Come check out the we. All right. And then we're going to draw one more frame down here and we're going to have um, a television set and this television is going to have um, we bowling on it. So these are my bowling pins that are not very well drawn and a big bowling ball running towards them and like a big crash. And we're going to have Joe here and Joe is going to have his Wiimote and he's got his glasses on and he's smiling and he's still got his cane. Um, and he is going to say, wow, I had no idea I could bowl inside. And Gladys over here is going to still have her smile on and she's going to say, yep, just don't 
throw that remote. Okay, so this is my storyboard that I created in like two minutes and I am not an artist, but it conveys a high level concept, a person, um, what their situation and issue is, and another person who's coming along and offering um, some kind of situation or device or something that can help, and then sort of the resolution that shows the satisfaction. Now, this is not for, this is the Nintendo Wii and I didn't design that, but you can imagine conveying something like this that is just an idea that you haven't yet developed. Okay, so that's an example of a storyboard and drawing with star people and how you do not have to be an artist at all. Okay, so let's think about um, what a storyboard's um, uh, content fidelity matrix is. And for information design, we're not really showing how things are organized in the system. We didn't show what the menus were for the Nintendo Wii. And we're not showing visual design or branding at all or any editorial content, but the interaction design. We're showing that the guy is in front of the TV and he has a remote and what he's able to do. So we're, we're showing a little bit of detail about the interaction with the system. And that's really typically what storyboards are about is showing a little bit of detail about interaction. All right. So another form of prototyping is blank model prototyping. And this is a physical prototyping um, concept. And here we're using really simple materials like clay or cardboard, um, that kind of thing, to create prototypes of new hardware devices. And this allows you to experience, experiment with how something feels, like how heavy it is, what how big it is, how it's gonna sit in your hand, where the buttons should be, that type of thing. And again, this is useful for those early ideation stages of uh, product development. So in this picture here, you see somebody has used clay to make um, an interactive pen that actually has a little tiny display on it that it would show text. And there's a button at the top and a little twisty green thing near the top that you could turn for different menus. Um, and so this is just a very early prototype. It's very conceptual, not a lot of detail. Now you can do other types of physical prototyping that are higher fidelity. So that's using things like 3D printers and so on. But for very early initial ideation, just using something like clay is actually fantastic. So the content fidelity matrix for blank model prototyping has very low fidelity information design and visual design and branding and editorial content. And it's got quite low fidelity, but not very low fidelity interaction design. All right, on to wireframing. So wireframing is also something that you use fairly early in a uh, process of product or, or system design. And it's supposed to show the sort of the conceptual flow, what things look like on screen, how things are organized, and how the navigation aids, the buttons or other types of things that are gonna get you from screen to screen are laid out, okay? So this is an example of a wireframe sketched by hand in somebody's notebook and you can see these screen layouts and you can see these arrows. Like if you click here, you're gonna end up on this screen. If you click here, you're gonna end up and see this dialog box. If you click over here, you're gonna end up here. And so it sort of shows the information architecture, how stuff is grouped on different screens and how you get from screen to screen. But it's all very, very low detail and it's pretty sketchy. It's not um, very refined or, you know, there's not, there's no colors or logos. You don't know what font is here. It's just very much about sort of the breakdown of stuff between screens and how the navigation between screens works. Um, you can also do wireframing uh, using digital tools. So something like Adobe Illustrator or whatever your favorite um, computer and paint program is. And so in this example, you, you we've got um, actually layouts of an iPad type device. And so here's some wireframe that shows there's gonna be a video and you're gonna have a get started button. And then once you click get started, you're gonna have screens like this. And if you click this, you're going to have a screen that takes you here. So this is an example of a digital wireframe uh, prototype. 
So let's look at the content fidelity matrix for wireframes. So information design is actually now starting to show. We're starting to see how things break down across different screens. And interaction design is also being shown because we're seeing how to get from one screen to another. We still don't have visual design and branding. We don't know what fonts or color schemes or logos or icon sets are gonna be used. And there's almost no editorial content. You know, we're not actually showing real pictures or videos, we're just using boxes to highlight where those would be, what we call placeholders. All right, so in this first part of our prototyping, we talked about why prototyping is important and how it's really critical to start with many low fidelity prototypes, many different concepts and ideas, and then you discard the ones that don't work as you get feedback from your users. And those users are gonna give you really good feedback because they don't look like polished finished products. And in the next video, we'll move on to talk about more high fidelity prototyping tools like wireframes and paper prototypes and interactive prototypes. All right, thanks for watching.